Have you ever stared at two identical cars? Literally the same model, same year, same engine code, parked side by side, one registered in California and the other in Germany, and noticed something insane? The American owner's manual screams, OW20 only or your warranty is toast. While the European manual casually says, 5W30 or even 10W30 is perfectly fine. Same pistons, same turbo. If it has one, same everything. Yet completely different oil recommendations. How does that even make sense? A lot of people think it's just hotter in Texas or colder in Sweden. Nope, the real reason is way more calculated than weather, and it could be quietly costing engines thousands of miles of life depending on which oil actually ends up in the sump. Today we're ripping the lid off this mystery once and for all. Part 1. The mind-blowing double standard. Take the Toyota 2.5-liter A25AF KS four-cylinder, the exact same block and head. In the United States, Toyota will void your powertrain warranty in a heartbeat if you dare put anything except 0W20 in it. Drive the identical engine in Japan, Australia, the Middle East, or most of Europe? Toyota themselves say 5W300W30, or even 10W30 is approved. Same story with Honda's 1.5-liter Turbo L15 series. North American Civics and CRVs are locked to OW20 like it's holy water. Cross the Atlantic to the UK, Ireland, or mainland Europe, Honda's official spec sheet lists OW30 or 5W30 without blinking. Same connecting rod bearings, same piston coatings, same oil pump, same everything. So what's going on? Is Honda secretly building two different engines on the same assembly line? Of course not. The difference isn't climate, driving style, or fuel quality. It's politics and paperwork dressed up as engineering. Part 2. The real culprit. CAFE standards and billion-dollar fines in the United States. Car companies live or die by something called corporate average fuel economy. Cafe. It's not a suggestion. It's a government mandate with teeth. Miss your fleet average. MPG target by just 0.1 or 0.2 miles per gallon. And you're looking at fines that can run into hundreds of millions of dollars. We re-talking real money that can wipe out an entire year's profit on a model line. So how do manufacturers claw those last tenths of a mile per gallon out of an engine that's already been optimized to death? One of the cheapest, easiest tricks in the book. Switch to an ultra-thin, low-friction oil like OW20 during the official EPA fuel economy test cycle, which is done in a lab at controlled temperatures. AOW20 can shave anywhere from 0.4 to 1.2% off parasitic drag inside the engine. That translates directly into better MPG numbers on the window sticker and keeps the government off their back. Outside the US, most countries either don't have CAFE style penalties or the fines are laughably small. So manufacturers have zero incentive to sacrifice long-term durability for a tiny bump in test cycle efficiency. That's why the exact same engine sold in non-coffee markets gets a thicker, more protective oil straight from the factory. Part 3 Viscosity 101 What those numbers actually tell you, let's break down what. OW20 versus 5W30 really means no marketing fluff. The first number, OW5W10W, is the winter rating, how easily the oil flows at sub-zero startup. Lower is better for cold mornings, and modern O West 20 oils are absolute champions here. The second number, 203040, is the oil's thickness at 100 degrees Celsius, normal operating temperature. Here's where the rubber meets the road. At 100 degrees Celsius, a 5W30 is roughly 50 to 60% thicker than AOW20. That extra film strength is what keeps metal parts from touching when you're hammering down the highway at 80 miles per hour in 110 degrees Fahrenheit heat, or when your turbo is glowing red after 10 minutes of full boost. Yes, OW20 gives. You marginally better cold start protection and slightly lower friction when everything is happy and new. But the moment temperatures climb, loads increase or the engine has a few thousand miles on it, that super-thin oil film can break down faster, leading to increased bearing wear, oil consumption, and in extreme cases, turboshaft damage. Part 4 Modern Engine Clearances Designed for Thin Oil Until they're not, today's engines are built like Swiss watches, insanely tight tolerances, diamond-like carbon coatings, microscopic bearing clearances measured in microns. Those super-narrow gaps are one reason thin OW20 works at all. 
Thicker oil literally couldn't squeeze through when the engine is cold. Manufacturers love it because tighter clearances plus thin oil equals less pumping loss equals better. Cafe numbers and lower tailpipe emissions during the first few minutes after startup, which is a huge part of modern emissions tests. But here's what almost nobody talks about. Engines don't stay brand new forever. Normal wear, even on a gently driven car, slowly increases those clearances. By 80,000 to 100,000 miles, many engines that were born on OW2O actually run happier, quieter, and with lower long-term wear on a good 5W3O or OW3O. Thousands of mechanics and engineers on forums like Bob is the Oil Guy have documented lower bearing wear, reduced oil consumption, and quieter valve trains after making the switch on higher mileage Japanese engines, especially turbos. The factory may spec OW2O to keep the EPA happy, but physics doesn't care about regulations once those clearances open up. Part 5. The real enemy isn't cold. It's heat. A lot of people assume OW20 was forced on us because American winters are brutal. That's a myth. The truth is the exact opposite. Large parts of the United States get far hotter in summer than Japan or Germany ever do. Pull into Phoenix, Dallas, or Miami in July and sit in traffic engine oil tong, easily climb past D-260 degrees Fahrenheit, Pan-27 degrees Celsius. That's the environment where ultra-thin zero W2O starts to lose its composure. Real-world oil analyzes from Blackstone Labs, Lake Speed Jr. and countless used oil reports on forums consistently show that many OW20 synthetics shear 10 minus 20% of their viscosity in just 5,000 to 8,000 miles when routinely exposed to those temperatures. A good 5W30 of the same quality usually drops less than 5%. Bottom line, OW2O isn't bad, but it's undeniably more fragile in sustained high heat conditions, exactly the kind most Americans actually live in. Part 6. Who actually decides the oil spec? Hint, not the engineers. Here's the dirty little secret nobody puts in the owner's manual. In the US, the viscosity printed on the oil cap isn't always what the engine designers wanted. It's what the EPA accepted during fuel economy certification. Changing it later triggers an expensive, year-long recertification process. So once Toyota, Honda, or Hyundai locks in OW20 to squeeze out that extra 0.3 to 0.8 mpg for CAFE credits. They're basically stuck with it on paper forever, even if real-world data later proves 5W30 is better for longevity and hot climates. That's why you'll find Toyota Australia, Toyota Middle East, Nissan GCC, and Mazda Southeast. Asia openly listing 5W30 or even OW30 as the factory fill and recommended grade for the exact same engines sold here with OW20. Looser fuel economy rules in those markets let the engineers win instead of the bureaucrats. Part 7. Actual teardown and oil analysis evidence. Example 1. 2018-2023 Toyota Camrys with the 2.5 LA25AFKS engine both driven in Texas, Florida climate for 120,000 plus miles. Car A, strictly OW20 synthetic, dealership bulk oil. Car B, 5W3O full synthetic. Mobile One, Valvoline restore and protect, etc. Used oil analysis Blackstone showed Car A had 38 to 45% higher iron and aluminum wear metals. When the valve covers were pulled at 130K miles, Car A had noticeable varnish and light carbon on the camshafts. Car B was practically clean. Fuel economy difference? Less than 0.6 mpg, roughly $35 to $45 a year at today's gas prices. Example 2. Honda Civic 1.5T, L15B7. Multiple documented cases, Project Farm, Speed Diagnostics, BITOG members, where switching from OW2025 W30 dropped oil consumption from one quart every 3,000 miles to almost zero and cut chromium and bearing material in half on subsequent UOAs. Honda Canada and Honda Australia already approve OW305W30 for this exact engine. Part 8. Will switching void my warranty? Short answer, no. Under the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, the burden of proof is on the manufacturer. They have to prove that using a thicker viscosity that still meets or exceeds the required APISP, ILSAC, GF6A, or GF7 standard directly caused the failure. Good luck with that when their own overseas divisions recommend the thicker oil. You'll even find U.S. service bulletins, Toyota TS, B, 
B000322, Honda SB21086, at C, that quietly say, 5W3O may be substituted when OW2O is unavailable. Translation. They already know it works perfectly fine. Part 9. It's not just the number additive packages rule everything a top tier OW2O AM soil signature. HPL number 7. Mobile 1 EP with high ester content and robust ZDDP moly can easily outperform a bargain bin conventional 5W3O. Conversely, a cheap meets a PISP 5W3O from a no-name brand can be worse than the best OW2O. So yes, viscosity matters, but formulation matters more. If you're going to switch, don't just grab whatever 5W3O is on sale. Pick something with a strong reputation for HTHS retention and film strength. Mobile One, Pennzoil Ultra Platinum, Valvoline Extended Protection, Castrol Edge, Amsoil, etc. Part 10. The winter rating is almost irrelevant for 90% of owners. The OW versus 5W only tells you how the oil behaves at minus 35 degrees Celsius, minus 40 degrees Celsius. Unless you regularly start your car in those temperatures, the cold pumpability advantage is meaningless. At operating temperature, both OW2O and 5W3O are 30 weight oils, but virtually every 5W30 on the market today has higher, high temperature, high shear, HTHS viscosity than AOW20, which directly translates to thicker oil film on bearings and cylinder walls when the engine is D-270 degrees Fahrenheit in summer traffic. Part 11. What dealership techs run in their own cars? We've talked to dozens of Toyota Master Techs, Honda Line technicians, and independent Japanese car specialists in Arizona, Texas, Georgia, and Florida. The overwhelming majority say something like, on the lift for a customer? OW20 bulk. Because that's what the computer spits out. My wife's RAV4? My son's Civic C, my personal truck, TUNED5W3 O Mobile One or Valvoline. Every single time, their reasoning is always the same. The wear protection difference is real. The fuel economy penalty is tiny, and they're the ones who see the torn down engines. Part 12. So what should you actually run? Cold climates, regular sub-zero starts, mostly short trips. Under 80k miles give stick with a high-quality OW20. You're fine. Hot climates, long highway commutes, towing, turbo engine, 60k plus miles. Spirited driving gives step up to a premium 5W30 or even OW30 in some cases. You'll probably add tens or hundreds of thousands of miles to the engine's life for pocket change. At the end of the day, the engine in your garage was designed and durability tested on 5W30 in half the world. Using it here, I SN to going against the manual. You simply driving the car the way the engineers originally intended before the lawyers and regulators got involved. Smash the like button if this opens your eyes, subscribe for more No BS Automotive Truth, and I'll see you in the next one. Your engine will thank you.